Welcome to Sunday Worship. You guys are in the right place at the right time. Thank you for being on time. You show that you love God and you respect God. Great job. What is our number one rule? Yes, God is good all the time. Then what about number two? Number two is go back to number one. So what is number one rule? God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Amen. I have a few announcements. We have a small group today, 1120 via Zoom. Please join us. Number two, I need volunteers for scripture reading and prayer. If you would like to do it, please let me know. Number three, we provide weekly questions every week. You can download it from our website. If you have any question, please let me know. Let's begin our time of worship together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before we praise the Lord, let's think about who He is and who we are by reading the scripture, Psalm 100. Let's read all together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with the singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It, it is He who made us and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Amen. Let's all stand together and praise the Lord.
thing we can count on If God will never let us down And we can trust everything He does He keeps His promises we know because Yeah, the word of the Lord holds still We can trust Him, we can trust Him amazing day that you have given us through that this joyful Sunday. Please let us be safe through this coronavirus so going through. And please let us stay safe so we can go back to church and focus more. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Emily, for praying for us. Have you ever been on a mission trip? Before the pandemic, there were many mission trips in Yongna Church. I've been on a mission trip to Mexico and Cherokee. It was very fun and exciting, but also we had a lot of difficulties too. Today, let's hear a story about two men who were willing to cross all kinds of cultural barriers to spread the good news of Jesus. Open your Bible, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verses 2 to 3. Today, 
Our fifth grader, Andrew Kim, will read a scripture for us. They were all worshiping the Lord and giving up eating. The Holy Spirit said to them, Give Barnabas and Saul to me to do the, a special work. I have chosen them for it. So they gave up eating and prayed. They laid their hands on Barnabas and Saul and sent them out. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 to 3. Amen. Saul, who was also known by his Roman name, Paul, was with the church in Antioch. The Holy Spirit chose Paul and another believer, Barnabas, for a special work. So they obeyed and left Antioch. God led Paul and Barnabas to tell the good news about Jesus to not only the Jews, but the Gentiles, or people who were not Jews. Paul and Barnabas traveled to Lystra. Paul healed a man there who had never been able to walk. The people saw what Paul had done, and they thought Paul and Barnabas were gods. They began to worship them, but Paul and Barnabas tore their clothes and shouted, No, we are not gods. We are men, just like you. We want to tell you the good news of God. Then some people showed up from Antioch and Iconium, cities where Paul and Barnabas had preached about Jesus. These people caused trouble so that the people in Lystra turned against Paul and Barnabas too. They threw stones at Paul and dragged him out of the city. They thought he was dead, but the believers in Lystra gathered around Paul. And he got up. Ah. The next day, Paul and Barnabas went to the city of Derbe. They told people there about Jesus and many people believed. Then Paul and Barnabas went back to Lystra into Iconium. They encouraged the believers there to continue in the faith. They told the believers that they would face suffering because they believed in Jesus. Paul and Barnabas also chose leaders for the churches. Finally, Paul and Barnabas returned to the church at Antioch. They reported everything God had done on their journey and how God had helped them share the good news with the Gentiles. Many people rejected the good news about Jesus, but God had a plan for Paul to share the gospel with the Gentiles, no matter what troubles he faced. Many believed in Jesus. The church grew and the gospel spread so that people all over the world could be saved from their sin by trusting in Jesus. Before we get too far into the story, let's review the big picture question and answer. What is our mission as Christians? Yes, our mission is to make disciples of all nations by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our purpose is to glorify God by spreading the news of His glory and love. We do that by reaching people of all nations and we are able to do that by the power of God through the Holy Spirit in us. That's why we are here on earth. Last week, we learned about Peter's escape from prison. It was not the result of a super great plan the church carried out. Who rescued Peter? Yes, God rescued Peter from prison. God still had plans for Peter. And since nothing can stop God's plans, nothing could prevent God from getting Peter out of prison. This week, we'll look at another part of God's plan that involved Paul. This week's Bible story is Paul's first journey. God sent Paul and his friend Barnabas to begin a new mission, one that would take them to places they had never been before. As they traveled, they met all sorts of different people with different reactions to their mission. Let's take a close look. 
Jesus was a Jewish man born in Israel. And his disciples were mostly Jews living in Israel, right? In fact, the early church was almost entirely made up of Jewish people living in where? You guess it? Israel, right? However, God's plan was never to have a church of one kind of a person living in one area of the world. God is the God of all nations, right? And His plan involves saving people of all nations from sin. So eventually, some Christian had to take the gospel to the Gentiles, right? Not Jewish people, the other peoples. Paul was one of the men God chose for this job, special job. The Holy Spirit chose Paul and another believer, Barnabas, for a special work. Do you remember who Paul and Barnabas were, are? Paul actually was called Saul. Saul was a religious Jew called a Pharisee, and he knew the Bible very well. He believed in God. He believed that there was a Savior that was going to come and save the Jewish people, but he didn't believe that the person, the Savior, was Jesus. So he hated people who believed in Jesus and put them in jail. However, after he met Jesus, he also became a Christian, loved Jesus, right? And now he became a missionary. What is a missionary? Missionary is a summon who is sent by God to tell others about Jesus. Do you remember Barnabas? His name means son of encouragement. Barnabas went to Antioch to encourage believers. He even found Paul to help teach, uh, teach them and grow their faith. But at that time, church members were afraid of being a friend to Paul. But Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Paul. He found Paul and brought him back to Antioch. They stayed with the church in Antioch for a year, teaching large group, large crowds of people. Why they were in Antioch? The Holy Spirit told the believers at the church in Antioch to send out Paul and Barnabas to preach the gospel. The church prayed and church obeyed. And Paul and Barnabas traveled to several cities and all over the island of Cyprus, telling both Jews and Gentiles about Jesus. Let's follow their mission journey together. They left Antioch and sailed to the island of Cyprus. When they came to Salamis, they went to the synagogue, which is a Jewish, Jewish meeting place, and preached the good news of God. And they went across the whole island to Paphos. In Paphos, they met the governor, Sergius Paulus. He wanted to hear the message of God. But Elimas, the magician, tried to stop the governor from believing in Jesus. Hmm. Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit, and the magician, Elimas, became blind for a time. When the governor saw this, he believed. He was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. Then Paul and Barnabas traveled to Lystra. Paul healed a man there who had never been able to walk. The people saw what Paul had done, and they thought Paul and Barnabas were God. They began to worship them. But Paul and Barnabas shouted, No, no, we are not God. We are men just like you. We want to tell you the good news of God. Paul and Barnabas told the Jews and Gentiles about Jesus. Most of the Christian church at that time was made up of Jewish people who believed Jesus was the promised Messiah. 
Did Jewish believers thought Jesus came only for God's chosen people? God wanted to share his promise with the entire world, not just the Jewish people. This was new and strange information for most Gentiles, especially those who worship the multiple gods and idols. To help people believe the words of Paul and Barnabas, the Holy Spirit helped them do some extraordinary things, miracles. Now you see why God made Paul perform the miracles. The miracles help people believe the word of God. When people try to believe in Jesus, Some Jewish people showed up from cities where Paul and Barnabas had preached about Jesus. These people caused trouble so that the people in Lystra turned against Paul and Barnabas too. They threw stones at Paul and dragged him out of the city. They thought he was dead, but the believers in Lystra gathered around Paul, and he got up. Paul was almost dead, but he didn't give up. The next day, Paul and Barnabas went to the city of Derby. They told people there about Jesus, and many people believed. Then Paul and Barnabas went back to Lystra and to Iconium. They encouraged the believers there to continue in the faith. They told the believers that they would face suffering because they believed in Jesus. They would have suffering because they believed in Jesus, but they still believed in Jesus. Paul and Barnabas also chose leaders for the churches. Paul and Barnabas told the Jews and Gentiles about Jesus. The Holy Spirit gave Paul and Barnabas the power to heal people, speak boldly to strangers, and even endure physical beatings. The Holy Spirit also gave them wisdom and direction to know where to go and who to leave as leaders for the new churches in each city they visited. Paul and Barnabas began to change the world because they were faithful to the mission God gave them. As Paul and Barnabas traveled, I'm certain the last part of our key passage was a special encouragement to them. Do you remember our key passage? This is our great commission, right? Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Let's read all together. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Jesus promised to always be with them through the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't promise there would be no sufferings. If you follow me, there would be no suffering, no problems. No, Jesus promised to be with us in our sufferings. That promise applies for us today. We can trust that we are never alone especially when we are on God's mission to make disciples. What is our mission as Christians? Our mission is to make disciples of all nations by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul and Barnabas' mission was not easy, but I'm so glad they were willing to obey God. Many people rejected the good news about Jesus, but God had a plan for Paul to share the gospel with the Gentiles, no matter what troubles Paul faced. 
Many believed in Jesus. The church grew and the gospel spread so that people all over the world, including you and I, could be saved from sin by trusting in Jesus. Thank God and praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today's message. Thank you for the example of Paul and Barnabas as they told people about Jesus even when it was hard. Help us have courage to tell our friends and family about Jesus too. Thank you for being with us all the time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you.